The units of pressure is Pascal. That is Newton per square meter. Can you feel one Newton per square meter? Can you feel one Pascal? No? At least I cannot feel. Can you feel 100 Pascal? Okay. If my weight, if I, uh, you can guess my weight, I claim that my weight is 50 kilogram, and I am experiencing 1 g, therefore the force acting on at this bottom would be 9 50 kilogram multiplied by 9.8 meter per second square. So if I assume that approximate 9.8 is 10, then the force acting at on this bottom would be 50 multiplied 10, that would be 500 Newton. Okay? So I ha if I have one meter and one meter square plate over here, then the pressure experienced by that plate would be 500 Pascal. That's a lot, 500 Pascal, right? Now you can have a s some sort of feeling about a Pascal. Okay. So th th there's a unit that we call absolute unit. Pascal is absolute unit. The unit for velocity would be meter per second. One meter per second. Is it one meter per second? One meter per second. But you certainly have a feeling about 100 kilometer per hour, right? So 100 kilometer per hour is what? If you translate into that is meter per second unit, and you have to do what? 100 kilometer, therefore 100 multiplied by 1,000. So that is 10 to the fifth. And you have to divide that to 3,600. That is what? Smart people can calculate it. Okay. So that meter per second certainly has a less, less feeling than kilometer per hour. In acoustics, in acoustics, those scale that we call uh, relative scale has to do with the way we are hearing, right? relative scale has to do the way we are hearing. So we have to know a little bit about our hearing system. Before, okay, let's look at how we hear. Okay. This is a pinna, okay. And we have auditory canal. And the auditory canal look like a duct, finite duct. So intensity over here would be somehow oxalating and propagating. I mean, intensity over here has mean value. Otherwise, we cannot hear. We have tympanic membrane or eardrum and we have a three ossicles that certainly amplify the signal using the property of a lever 
we have a three levers and this oxalate the oval window of cochlea okay. here is a cochlea and we have three semicircular canals that senses our angular motion like this like this and like this okay. that three uh, uh, semicircular canals is very important even though it is small if there is something wrong then we cannot work because we cannot sense the orientation if you look at the cochlea then it look like this there is a bacillar membrane that has non-uniform thickness over the bacillar membrane there is a hair cell okay when I whistle that's supposed to be one kilohertz then the bacillar membrane excited like this okay so the many amplitude of response of a bacillar membrane due to one kilohertz is maximum over here and the minimum over here and the minimum over here there's a certain distribution okay. why? because cochlea is filled by some fluid and the bacillar membrane there is a bacillar membrane and up and down there is a fluid so what actually happened is the air is oxalating over here and then eardrum oxalate and that signal is amplified by three articles and then the oval window is excited by the end of one article it's like a knocking window and then due to that excitation the, there is the wave propagation in the fluid of cochlea and that wave certainly follow the nonlinear mechanism therefore we have interesting wave of accumulation even though we have one frequency component okay so if your hair cell over here has some damage then it's not possible to hear the maximum one kilohertz amplitude right so depending on where your hair cell has a damage the hearing stimuli is distorted so you have some problem so often we call the hair cell is a spatially distributed spectrum analyzer 